All right then, so now we're keeping track of the user when they log into the application, when they log out, or when they first land on the application, we can see their current authentication status. So now we can start to play around with that a little bit and show and hide content dependent on whether they're logged in or not. But before we do that, I wanna do one more thing. So right now, all of these little guides right here, they are all hard coded inside our template down here. If we just scroll down a bit, we can see those down here, right? These are not actual guides. So what I'd like to do is store data inside a Firestore database, which is by Firebase, a different service, and then retrieve those and show those as guides instead. So that this data is not just hard coded, but instead stored in a database and we can add to that later on. So I'm not gonna go too deeply into Firestore in this series. Like I said, I do have a whole playlist on Firestore. So feel free to go and binge watch that to your heart's content, learn all about that if you're not familiar with it, and then come back here. But if you just want the basics, then feel free to stick around and I'll show you those now. So then first of all, we need to go to our Firestore database. And remember we set that up earlier on in the playlist. So go to database and we should see that Firestore database right here. Now, right now we don't have any data or any collections inside the database. So let's make our first collection. And this is how we store data in Firestore. We make collections, for example, we're gonna make a collection now called guides, and then we store documents inside that collection, and each document would refer to a single guide, right? So let's click next, and it's asking us to set up our first document inside this guides collection. Now this top field, this document ID, this is gonna be auto-generated by Firebase. So we don't need to worry about creating an ID for this document. Every time we create one, Firebase is gonna handle that for us and create a random unique ID. So all we need to do is specify a couple of fields for this document and the values of those fields. So documents in Firestore are very much like JavaScript objects. We have the field property and the value. So it's like key value pairs, right? So we need a title for each guide and the data type right here is gonna be a string for that title. And for this first one, we'll just do something like find all the stars in Mario 64, classic game. All right, so that is the title field. Now for the content, that is the name of the second field. It's also gonna be a string. I'm just gonna say lorem ipsum right here. And then that is it. We just need two fields, right? The title of the guide and the actual content of the guide. So now if we save that, then we're gonna see this over here. So we see the guides collection. It's just loading at the second. But now we see a unique document ID, right? For this document we've just created. Firebase handled that. Then when we click on this, we see that document right here. So we have the title and the content of that document. So that's one. If we want to add more documents, we can do right here. So let's go to that and add a new title for the second document. Again, don't touch the ID. Firebase will handle that. And the title one for this will be Beat Rainbow Road in record time. That's a Mario Kart course. Uh, the content again, can't be bothered writing anything out. So Lorem Ipsum, okay. So now we have two different documents right here inside this collection. Now what we want to do is from the front end, we want to connect to that collection and we want to get all of the documents from it so that then we can cycle through those documents inside our application and output them right here, okay? So then let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I want to do is go into auth.js and I want to get a reference to the database and then retrieve the data from it. So remember inside the index at the bottom when we did all the Firebase stuff, we said const db equals firebase.firestore. This initialized a connection to the Firestore database for us. And now we can access all the different methods on that database and interact with it using this constant db. We have access to that inside the auth.js file right here because that is below this thing right here. Okay, so at the top, let us do now a little comment saying get data. And then underneath that, I'm just gonna say db, which is that constant. Then we want to say dot collection. And this is gonna get a reference to a specific collection. Don't know why it said debugger, I said db, right? And the collection we want is the collection called guides. So this is gonna go out and get a handle of the guides collection. Then what we want to do is get all the documents inside it. So we use a method called dot get to do that. That goes out and retrieves those documents. Now then, once again, 
This is an asynchronous task. It might take some time to do a second, half a second, two seconds, whatever. Either way, it's asynchronous and it returns a promise. So like the other promises, we can tack on the dot then method and this fires a callback function when this action right here has completed. And when it's completed, it fires this callback function and the callback function takes in the response from this thing. And what it does is send back a snapshot of this collection right here. And by snapshot, I mean it brings back almost like a digital object representation of how the database looks at that moment in time, or rather how this collection looks with all the documents inside it. So that goes into this arrow function as a callback. And from that, we can get access to all the documents. So if I say console.log snapshot.docs, then what that is going to do is print out all the docs in the console that are in this guide's collection. So we access the docs from snapshot.docs. Okay, so let's save this and view this in a browser and it happens automatically. So we can see the user first of all right here. Then this is the snapshot.docs that we're getting back. You can see there's two elements in it in this array. The first one right here, we have this document. We don't see any of the fields on the document, but the second one as well, this document. Again, we don't see any of the fields like the title or the content, but we'll get those in a minute. Just understand we've brought back now these two documents from the Firestore collection that we made. Okay, so now we have those documents. What I'd like to do is somehow cycle through those documents and output them to the DOM. So instead of all this right here, all this mumbo jumbo where we hard code it, I want to get rid of that. And instead, I want to cycle through these documents and output them to the DOM. Now, remember, this file right here, auth.js, this is for any kind of authentication or Firebase code. Now, anything that's going to really manipulate the DOM or the template, I want to go in this index file. So let me save this for now and let me go inside the index file. We already have the materialized stuff right here, which manipulates the DOM. Now, what I'd like to do is create a new function. And this function is going to be responsible for setting up the guides. OK, so first of all, I need a reference to a DOM element. I need a reference to this thing right here because that's what we're going to append the guides to. So you'll notice, my friends, that this has a class of guides. So we'll use that inside index.js. We'll say const and then we'll call this guide list equals document dot query selector. And we want to grab that class, which is guides like so. So we have a reference to that now. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually set up the guides. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to create a function and this function is going to be called setup guides. And when we call this function, it's going to take in some data, the data that we receive right here, and then it's going to cycle through that data and output a guide for each element inside that data array. So let's store this in a constant, this, uh, this function, call it setup guides. It's equal to a function, an arrow function, which takes in, not arrows, it takes in the data. And this inside here is where we're going to output those guides based on the data. So first of all, let's call this method from auth.js. So instead of logging these to the console now, instead what I'm going to do is say setup guides, call that function, and then we're going to pass in snapshot.docs. So now we're passing this data, this data array of documents into the setup guides method right here. So when we take it in to this function over here, we have access to that data array. So now what we want to do is cycle through that data array and we want to output a guide for each one of those elements, right? And each guide is going to be an li tag. So we need to create some kind of template string and then append that template string to this thing right here, the guide list, which is the UL. So let's create a variable. First of all, I'm going to say let HTML equal to, first of all, an empty string. So we're going to be appending to this string as we cycle through the data. OK, so now we want to take that data and then we want to say for each and for each is a JavaScript method, which is going to iterate through that array and fire a function for each element inside that array. So what I'm going to do is say each time we take the document and that refers to the individual item each time around inside this data array. And then inside that, what I'd like to do is grab the data from each of those items. So remember, when we logged the data to the console, we didn't actually see the data. We're getting that error, by the way, but that's because 
we've not saved this. If I refresh now, then we're not going to get that error. But when we logged that data to the console before, we didn't actually see the properties like the title or the content for each of those elements inside the array. Now, we need to actually go out and grab that content using a method. And the way we get that is by using a method called data. So I'm going to say const guide is equal to doc, which is the individual element, the document reference, then dot data. Now, what I'll do is log this to the console. So console.log, and we're logging the guide. So just so you can see this, and what's going to happen is we're going to retrieve the data, then we're passing it inside this setup guides. So the snapshot.docs, we're passing in that array of documents. Then inside here, we're taking in that array, calling it data, setting up a blank string. Then we're getting that data array, cycling through that array using for each. We're firing a callback function for each one of the items in that array, and we're referencing the item as a doc. That's what we're calling it. Then we're getting the data from each of those items using the data method right here. And we're storing that inside this constant called guide. Then we're logging that to the console. So we should see this for each individual item in the array. Save that and go over to the browser. And now we can see these two things right here. So we have the top one, which is find all the stars in Mario 64, and the bottom one, beat Rainbow Road in record time. So each one of these things is an object, right? And each one has two properties, content and title. So we've accessed that now for each one of the different documents inside that data array. So now we have that data, what we can do is output that data to the DOM. So I'm going to create a new constant and this is going to be called li, make sure we spell that correctly, and set this equal to a string, right? Because we're going to output this string to the DOM and this string is going to be HTML. Now, instead of just doing a normal string using normal quotation marks like this, what I'm going to do is instead use a template string, which is backticks. And that is normally found below the escape key near the top left of your keyboard. And it looks a bit like a normal quotation, but kind of slanted. So they're called backticks. And we use those in JavaScript to create a template string. And what that allows us to do is dynamically output data inside curly braces. Okay, so that's why I'm using a template string. So I'm just going to zoom this down to the next line, put your semicolon at the end. And inside this template string, we'll just create a bit of HTML. So first of all, for each guide, we want an li tag, right? So we'll create that first of all. Then inside the li tag, oops, we want a couple of things. We want the guide title and also the guide content. So for each one, I'll put them inside a div. Then we're going to have a class equal to collapsible header. If I can spell this correctly, like so. And give this a class of gray to make the background gray and also lighten hyphen four. So this is just the same as before when we had all of this uh, template code in here. And I'll just undo this so we can see it. We're just basically outputting these two things right here. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to paste, uh, copy and paste these. So I've copied this. Let's go over here. And let's just paste those in because that's essentially what we're outputting for each li tag, right? But instead of hard coding the guide title and the guide body down here, what we're instead going to do is output the data that we get back. Now, in a template string, the way we output data is by using a dollar sign, first of all. Then inside curly braces, we can output the data. Now, we want the guide, which is this thing up here, remember, with the data on it. Then we want the title property, first of all. OK, then down here, we want the content. So again, curly braces or rather dollar sign curly braces. Then we want the guide dot content, right? So now what we're doing is creating this li HTML for each guide, right? As we cycle through the documents and we're going to append that to this thing each time around. So I'll do that underneath. I'm going to say HTML, which is this variable right here, plus equals to the template we've just created for that individual guide. So li. So we're going to cycle through the data. We're going to do this for each individual guide inside this data array right here. OK, and we're appending it to the HTML. So if we have three, it's going to do it three times. Each time it's going to append that bit of code to the HTML. Now we want to take that HTML and we want to append that to this stuff over here. So let's delete all this again. And we want to set the inner HTML of this thing to the stuff that we've just created over here. So let me now say down here, after we've done all of this for each loop, let me say guide list, which is the ul dot inner HTML is equal 
to the HTML variable, okay? So it's gonna take all of this and output it to the DOM. And this is happening after we've grabbed the data and we call this method, all right? So then, whew, now we've done all that, let's save this, cross our fingers and hope it works. Go to the browser and voila, we can see those things right here. So this has worked perfectly. So again, I know I've not gone into great depth on how Firestore works and how we retrieve the data, but like I said, I'd expect you already have a little bit of familiarity with Firestore. Now, if you want to learn more about Firestore and how we retrieve data like this and things like the snapshot and docs, then feel free to check out my Firestore complete series. The link is going to be down below. But anyway, now we've actually got the data and we're showing it right here. At the minute, everyone can see this, but I only want logged in users to be able to see this. So in the next video, we're gonna tackle that and we're gonna make it so that we're locking down our data so that only users who are logged in can actually see the guides.